So they said, our God makes it sparkle. That's why we worship him. Thomas said, pick up a handful of that water. He said, I'm going to prove to you that my Christ rose from the dead. If he was dead, he couldn't perform a miracle. But if he can perform a miracle, he's still alive. And he said, throw it up in the water. And they laughed at him. But first he made them agree that if his God would make that water stop in midair, they'd serve him, Jesus Christ, and believe he was alive. Friend, it's the only way in the world you'll ever convert the heathen. Let them see the miraculous. One man got a big double handful of that water and threw it high in the air. And Thomas pointed at it and said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, stop. And thousands of Hindus watched that water. It stopped in midair. It never went any higher, and it never fell back in the water. And the Hindus watched it there as it sparkled in the sun as that handful of water stood in midair. And by the thousand on the bank of that river, they knelt on their knees and said, Oh, Jesus, come to us and make yourself real to us. And it was there that Thomas had his first revival. Up and down the streams and up and down southern India, the man you call Doubting Thomas had some of the greatest revivals the world has ever known. And the Hindus and the Mohammedans came to Christ by the middle end. Why? Not because he preached he rose from the dead, but because Thomas got help and healing from the demon and deliverance from the demon of doubt and unbelief. And he performed the mightiest miracles of any of the twelve or all of them put together. Bow your heads and ask, ask God to deliver us from our unbelief and our doubt and our skepticism. Let's ask God to forgive us of our unbelief. Say, oh God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because if Thomas got help for his unbelief, you can have help for yours. God, help our unbelief today in Jesus' name. I'm going to shout in the camp tonight. I come out here to preach about the demon of doubt, the demon of unbelief. And the Lord sort of steered me off on the demon of pride and then the demon of jealousy. But I want to tell you this. I believe there is a sin of murmuring. I believe there is a sin of criticizing. I believe there's a sin of finding fault and complaining. This is why the Apostle Paul said, Neither murmur ye as others murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. I'm going to get to my subject in a few minutes and talk to you about the demon of fear, the devil of doubt and unbelief and skepticism. But I want to tell you, friend, there's such a thing as a lying demon. There are religious demons. There are demons of lust. There are filthy demons. There are unclean demons. Jesus said, come out of him, thou filthy devil. Amen? Amen. Some people are bound by filthy demons. Some people are bound by unclean spirits. Some people always take the off-color side of a story. No matter what kind of a story you tell them or whatever they read or hear, they can always make vulgarity out of it because their mind is in the gutter and they've got an unclean spirit and a filthy demon on the inside of them. Why? Too many people have got an unclean, filthy devil. Hear me. The Bible tells me very plainly that there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord. And it said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit. Notice this. This is 1 Kings 22, 21, and 22. Thing. I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. The Lord said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do it. But there is every inference here that this demon spirit had discharged his duties in some other capacity at some other date. But at this particular time, his orders from headquarters, which is from the pit, was to discharge his duties as a lying demon. He didn't say, I am a lying devil. He said, I will go forth and I will be a lying demon. He said, today my duty is to make this man believe a lie. Amen. I believe there are demon spirits whose one day it is their duty to make you become jealous. 
The following day, that same demon's duty may be to discharge his duties as a lying spirit and tell you uh, that you are going to die, you are not going to get healed, your loved ones are not going to get saved, or you haven't been saved, or you haven't been healed, or you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost. See what I mean? But as sure as there are all this different type of demon spirits in the world, and you know I'm telling you the truth, to some it is their duty to cause infirmity, sickness, and disease. To some demons it is their duties to discharge their duties in the capacity to cause insanity or mental sickness. But here is a man over in the 20th chapter of John that said, I don't believe it was him talking. I believe he was inspired of the demons. I believe he was possessed by something on the inside of him that talked. And that thing that talked was not the Spirit of God. It didn't come from heaven and he never got his inspiration from what Jesus taught. Jesus taught faith. Jesus teaching brought and built confidence. But here is what that old boy said. He said, I will not believe. In other words, it's impossible for me to believe. What? He laid down two conditions only and two conditions only under which he would believe and he declared emphatically that under any other circumstances it's impossible for him to believe he said i will not believe how many believe it could have been a demon spirit and here is what god said in second timothy 1 7 god hath not given us the spirit of fear then fear is a spirit is that right Fear is the spirit, and fear is the direct opposite of faith. And you can't have faith and fear at the same time. How many believe you can get rid of your fear? Yeah. So how do you know? Bless your heart, I know Thomas got rid of his. So how do you know? I, he got deliverance, and I'm going to tell you when he got deliverance. In the 20th chapter of John, when he came in, the doors being shut, and he found Jesus in the midst of the disciples, and Jesus said, Come here, Thomas, and put your finger in the holes. Thrust your hand in, Messiah, and be not faithless but believing. I to see, friends. What's this? Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. What is it? Woe, ye inhabitants of the earth. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. He knows that his time is short. And I've said this is the cause of so much demon possession today. This is the cause of so much juvenile delinquency. This is the cause of so much hatred. This is the cause of much variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies listed in Galatians 5. Paul declaring, they that do such things shall never inherit the kingdom of God. He said, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the... In other words, yield to God, believe what God said, and you'll not continue to be walking for the devil and serving the devil and doing what the devil says. How many believe you can have power over the devil? Yeah. Read the 24th and 25th chapters of Matthew. A certain man traveled, went into a far country, but before he left, he delivered unto all his servants his goods. He took a journey, but after a while he came back. He came back to reckon with his servants. But before he left, he'd given one five talents, another ten, and to another one. And finally he came back to reckon with his servants. And when he came back, the one who received the ten ran out and said, Oh, Lord, I have received ten more. I put it out to the exchangers. Another said, Lord, she gave me five. Look, I've got ten. I've got five more beside it. He said, Are into the joy of thy Lord. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many. But there's one old boy come sneaking out under conviction, under condemnation. He'd been warm on a church bench. Might have been ordained somewhere, but he didn't have enough of what it took. He's afraid to quit his job and start preaching. He's afraid God let him starve to death. He's afraid to quit his job and get out and do what God told him to do. He's afraid he couldn't make his car payments. He's afraid he couldn't pay his rent. He's scared God's word won't stand up under him. He's afraid God's word will fall through with him. Come on, you saints of God. But I know this. There was a time when he had an experience with God because God said he divided to every man according to his several ability. Straightway he took his journey. But when the trumpet sounded, and this is the picture of the coming of Jesus. Read it in Matthew 24. Here come one, and he said, Lord, I was afraid. And I went and hid your money. But he said, here, you can have it now. And he started digging it out. You know what Jesus said to him? Jesus refused it. Why? It had been buried too long.